Hi friends, welcome back to Sharon Zoology. In this session, we are going to learn about gastrulation in humans. See, we know gastrulation means maximum morphogenetic movement. Morphogenetic movement can seen in this gastrulation. Morphogenetic movement or the embryonic cell movement. This embryonic cell movement causes the formation of a trilaminar germ disc or the trilayered embryo, the gastrula. So the maximum morphogenetic movement can be seen in this gastrulation process. See, we studied about blastocyst. This blastocyst contain inner cell mass and protoblast or outer cell mass. And after implantation, the inner cell mass split to form two layers. The cells of this inner cell mass split to form two layers. So the cells of inner cell mass split to form two layers. They are epiblast and hypoblast cells of this inner cell mass split to form epiblast and hypoblast this embryonic stage is known as bilaminar germ disc so a bilaminar germ disc can be seen in this stage two layers epiblast and hypoblast At this stage, this epiblast again split. This epiblast split to form a new cavity. This epiblast split to form this new cavity, amnion. And this amnion filled with the amniotic fluid. And here this amnion is lined by, this amnion is lined by the layer is called as. Actually they are the cells of epiblast. That layer or the lining of that amnion is called as. Amniotic ectoderm. Amniotic ectoderm. So this is amnion, epiblast, hypoblast. And here, this cavity is now called as the primitive yolk sac. Primitive yolk sac. Amnion, epiblast, hypoblast, and primitive yolk sac. From this stage, the hypoblast layer, this layer is called as hypoblast. This hypoblast undergo delamination. Delamination means splitting and migration of a sheet of cell. Splitting and migration of a sheet of cell. This embryonic movement or this morphogenetic movement is called as delamination. See here. This is the epiblast layer. This is a cavity amnion. And this hypoblast layer undergo delamination that means split and migrate and form a new layer and this newly formed layer found as the lining of this primitive yolk sac this primitive yolk sac or this plastocyte it found as the lining of this primitive yolk sac now this hypoblast is called as 
extra embryonic endoderm extra embryonic endoderm now this hypoblast become extra embryonic endoderm so this is amnion and this form epiblast this is the extra embryonic endoderm this is the primitive yolk sac this cavity then when we look on the top of this epiblast looking on the top of this epiblast we can see two openings one is the procordial plate procordial plate on the cranial end the procordial plate on the cranial end another one is caudal plate on the cloacal end on the cloacal end so procordial on the cranial end that means anterior end and posterior end have the caudal plate so on the top of the epiblast this is epiblast we can see this procordial plate and caudal plate then i am going to take a section a section from the top a section on this epiblast make a section for in this epiblast cut from here this is epiblast next is this one the hypoblast so this is epiblast and this one is hypoblast this is the cranial edge that means the anterior end the cranial portion the cranial end the anterior end this is the caudal portion then a number of signaling process a number of signaling process causes the thickening of this epiblast thickening of epiblast from its caudal end thickening of epiblast from its caudal end so causes the thickening of this epiblast from its caudal end so thickening of this epiblast on its caudal end and this thickened region is called as the thickened portion is called as primitive streak This thickened portion is called as primitive streak. This primitive streak goes towards the cranial end, and a rounded, thickened portion of this primitive streak, the round thickened portion of this primitive streak is called as primitive node. And it grows towards the cranial end. This primitive streak and not grow towards the cranial end see here after the formation of this primitive streak and primitive knot after the formation of this streak and knot see after the formation of this primitive streak and primitive knot some of the cells in the primitive streak and knot dies some of the cells in the primitive streak and knot dies what happened which causes a depression or cavity here which causes a cavity or depression which causes a cavity some of the cells in the primitive streak and primitive node dies and form a cavity or a depression this formed a cavity is called as as a result now this primitive streak become primitive groove 
Now this primitive tree become primitive group. This is the primitive group. Now it become primitive group. The primitive tree become primitive group. And the primitive node become primitive pit. The primitive node become the primitive pit. After the death of some of the cells in the primitive tree and primitive node. This cell grew because, sorry, the primitive streak become primitive grew and primitive not become primitive pit. So the cavity are formed here. Here. Now the cells of this primitive grew. The cells of this primitive grew now secrete some paracrine signal, some signaling factors. Some of the cells in the primitive group secrete some paracrine signals like fibroblast growth factors 8, FGF8. The cells of the primitive group secrete some signal like paracrine signals like fibroblast growth factors 8. And this signal transported to the neighboring cells of epiblast. This signal sent to neighboring cells of epiblast. We know this is epiblast. These signals are sent to the neighboring cells of epiblast. As a result, see here, these are two neighboring cells of epiblast. And these cells are tightly bound up with the help of cell adhesion proteins like cadherin. So these are two neighboring cells and these cells are adhered with the help of the cell adhesion proteins like cadherin. See, here the cells of primitive streak secrete the growth factor FGF. See, this signal or this growth factor transported to the neighboring cell. The neighboring cell have the receptor for this FGF growth factor. The neighboring cell have receptor for this FGF, FGF8 growth factor. So this growth signal bind on this receptor. The receptor of neighboring cell. That particular cell gets stimulated and they develop some second messengers. The second messenger stimulate a particular gene. The particular gene stimulation causes the production of a protein. So this signal stimulates the cell for producing a particular protein like snail. Else in the production of a particular protein like a snail. This snail protein inhibit the formation of this cadherin. The snail protein inhibit the formation of cadherin and it inhibit the cadherin protein. What happened? This cadherin protein disappeared. When this cell lost this cell adhesion protein cadherin, what happened? Cause the separation of cell and leads to cell migration. So this FGS sends signal to neighboring cell. What happened? Losses the E cadherin protein and causes the cell migration. See, in gastrulation we can see maximum morphogenetic movement, embryonic cell movement. So by this way, these epiblast cells undergo migration or movement. So these cells of epiblast undergo migration. Here the cells of epiblast undergo migration. So as a result of the migration of cells of epiblast, the epiblast cell migrated towards this group. So cells of epiblast migrated to the group and the, through the group, this cell migrate down. Through the group, this cell migrate down. The cell migrate down to the hypoblast. This cell migrate down to the hypoblast. 
see here this is the primitive groove and from here the cells of epiblast migrate the cells of epiblast migrate down and move to the epiblast on what happened and this migrated cell displaces these migrated cells displaces the cells of this hypoblast these migrated cell displaces the cells of this hypoblast now the cells of this hypoblast are displaced by the cells of this epiblast clear so so the cells of epiblast migrate down and displaces the cells of epiblast so the cells of the epiblast migrate down through the primitive group and it displaces the cells of hypoblast see here the cells of these hypoblast are displaced by the cells of this hypoblast are displaced by the epiblast cell this formed epiblast is called as endoderm this newly formed epiblast that means the epiblast move down through the primitive group and displaces the cells of the hypoblast this newly formed layer is called as endoderm okay this newly formed layer is called as endoderm so now these cells are endoderm that means these cells move down then down to side and move forward this formed layer is endoderm then again the cells of epiblast undergo movement that means here again the primitive strike produces the fgf8 growth signal which causes the loss of cad carrying protein and cell migration continue so again the cells undergo migration so here again the cells of this epiblast undergo migration and migration through the primitive streak again the cells of epiblast undergo migration and migrate down through the primitive streak these cells migrate down this migrated cell migrate down and move to the side the cell migrated down move to the side and move forwardly see here this cell move to the side then it move forwardly towards the cranial end this formed layer this moved cell form a new layer this moved cell form a new layer called as mesoderm this formed layer is called as mesoderm so first moved cell were endoderm then second after the formation of this endoderm the cells moved from the epiblast and moved down move side and move to forwardly to the caudal sorry to the cranial end and this migrated cells form the mesoderm then this rest form ectoderm and form a trilaminar gem disc a trilaminar gem disc three layers are formed ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm this stage is called as gastrula this embryonic cell movement is called as gastrulation and again this cell movement continue then again some of the mesodermal cells remain here some of the mesodermal cell remains in the epiblast move through this primitive node move through this primitive node see i am going to take a sagittal section a sagittal section of this structure in the sagittal section this is the primitive pit this is ectoderm 
This one is mesodal and this is endodal. The layers of this trilaminar disc. And here, again some of the mesodermal cells remain here. That mesodermal cells, that mesodermal cell which will remain in the epiblast, move down through the primitive pit, move down through the primitive pit and form a tubular structure. These mesodermal cells remain in the epiblast, move down through the primitive pit and form a tubular structure. This tube is called as notochord. This tube is called as notochord. It is very essential for developing signal for the new relation process. We will discuss in later about the new relation process and organogenesis. Anyway, these are the three layers of the gastula. This trilaminar disc is gastula state. The layers of gastula, ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. And these three layers are formed by the maximum morphogenetic movement of the cells of this epiblast. So in brief, this gas flash is first of all the inner cell mass split to form epiblast and hypoblast. Epiblast split to form a cavity amnion. Then the hypoblast delaminate from this epiblast and form a new layer is the primitive endoderm. This newly formed layer was called as primitive endoderm. When then at the caudal end, this epiblast develop a thickening called as primitive streak and primitive node. And some of the cell die from this primitive streak and primitive node, it becomes primitive groove and primitive pit. And the cells of this primitive streak secrete some signal like a FGF growth signal, which causes the cell migration. As a result, the cells of this epiblast migrate down, migrate down through the primitive groove and displaces the cells of this primitive endoderm and form the new endoderm. The migrated cell move down and displaces or replaces the cells of this hypoblast and from the new layer is called as endoderm. Again the cell continue the movement. The epiblast cell move down through the primitive groove and move down, move side and move forwardly to form the mesoderm layer. Then the remaining epiblast become ectoderm. These are the three layers. This is the gastrulation process, the morphogenetic cell movement or the embryonic cell movement called as gastrulation. After gastrulation, three embryonic layers are formed as ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. These are called as germ layers. These three layers are called as germ layers. And from these three layers, from this ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm, all the organs and organ systems are formed. I'll explain in detail about the fate of this germless during organogenesis. Okay. In this session, we completed gastrulation, the morphogenetic embryonic cell movement. Thank you for watching my video. Please like, share, and subscribe my channel, Sherum Zoology.